Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service of worship. Although I'm here on my own in the empty church, it is filled with the presence of God. And where you are, in your heart, in your house, in your place, be filled with the presence of the Lord also. We're going to sing our first hymn, which is All My Ways Are Known to You. cheerful and joyful. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, how happy we are that we know you and above all that you know us. Thank you for that relationship. 
for that oneness that gives us courage every day, strength every minute, hope every hour, for that relationship that fills our life with fullness. And we thank you, Lord, for all your provision, for families, for friends and neighbours, for work, employment, for hobbies and activities, for everything that enriches our lives. And thank you most of all for faith in and through Jesus, who is your Son and our Saviour and Lord. Lord, help us to remember and never forget. And also we remember, Lord, that it was necessary for Jesus to come and die. It was necessary for him to deal with our sins. And, oh, Lord, our God, he is still dealing with our sins. You know them, Lord, and we know them. We try to disguise them or to cover them up, but shine your light on us and we will see. Reveal the truth to us and we will know. And Lord, help us to be corrected in your love and help us to be renewed and strengthened so that we can be stronger Christians today than we were yesterday, so that we can be prepared to be stronger tomorrow because, Lord, life demands it and we need it. Lord, in your strength, we praise you, we thank you, we glorify you, we lift your name high and thank you for being our Lord. And now hear us, Lord, as we join our hearts and voices together saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I'm going to read from the of James in the New Testament. James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. Listen for the word of the Lord. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intensely into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in whatever he does. If anyone considers himself religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Amen. And may God add his blessing to that reading of his holy word. To his name be all praise and glory. You know, the Bible is very practical. It's very down to earth and it gives us clear instructions. It tells us how to live as Christians and we have no excuse. The passage from the Bible there from James was written specifically to believers, but his emphasis is not only on believing, but also on doing. You know, we have to apply our faith. We have to live out our faith. And the best way to live out our faith is by being kind and loving and helpful in a deliberate way because we are Christians, even when other people are not deserving or behaving well. 
And we need to be there for people. But, you know, one of the biggest failings that, that we have as people and as Christians is not listening to others or not listening properly. Listening is really hard, especially if you're someone like me who prefers to blether than to listen. And, of course, we all know we've been given two ears for listening and one mouth for speaking so that we should listen twice as much as we speak. But do we? We all find it hard to do. Even folk who seem to be listening can be miles away or only half listening. You know, we love it when other people give us their full attention. But we don't give that to other people. Most of the time, we're not good at listening and focusing ourselves. When my grandchildren were toddlers, I remember my daughter-in-law telling them to put their listening ears on when they weren't paying attention. Come on, put your listening ears on. And I've heard primary school teachers say the same thing. And it is a great way to get children to focus. Do you think it would work if I told the congregation on Sunday to put their listening ears on? But sometimes it is really hard to listen in church. Listening to the word of God in the Bible or the word of God preached in a sermon calls for great concentration and discipline. And we should also be aware that there is a spiritual fight going on. The evil one doesn't want us to hear God's word and he certainly doesn't want us to be acting upon it. And sometimes, you know, he actually puts a spirit of slumber over us. That's a very real thing. Do you ever wonder why you feel sleepy as soon as the sermon starts or even after a, a first few sentences? Okay, perhaps sometimes the sermon can be boring, but there are other boring situations in life when we don't fall asleep. And even before we start, do we just automatically close our eyes, think we're going to concentrate, but before we know where we are, we're asleep. Maybe we need prayer for this or simply need to give ourselves a shake and listen. Then we're given practical advice about anger. You know, many words are spoken in anger. And what do we think is behind that horrific situation in Afghanistan? There is anger there, there is frustration, there's evil, there's, there is downright evil being done in all quarters. And what's at the root of it? Man's anger, not God's righteous anger. Man's anger is causing that evil. And so many words are spoken in anger. We know that in our own lives. Okay, we can apologise later, but by then, too often the damage is done. That is damage to the other person, damage to whatever the relationship was, but also damage to ourselves. We really need to control our tongue and our anger for our own sakes as well as for others. You know, anger damages us and it never helps the situation. There are wiser ways to deal with issues. And you know, it is possible to live an unoffendable life think about that. We can actually choose not to be offended. We can actually choose not to be angry. And the sooner we learn to be unoffended, the better. And get rid of all moral filth. Well, that teaching couldn't be clearer. And we know fine well what that means and in what areas of our lives God is directly challenging us. Then we have the concept of um, looking in the mirror and forgetting what we see. Now, it's an analogy for reading the Bible and then forgetting what we read. And it's a good analogy. You know, I look in the mirror and I see another wrinkle or another age spot or a stray hair somewhere. And I get the tweezers out, and get the makeup on and hope for the best. Put a smile on, get out there, girl, and forget what you really look like. But thinking of mirrors, 
I have to laugh at my sister. If she sees somebody outside who looks a mess, especially if their clothes are too tight and they're bulging all over the place, or the midriff or the belly is exposed, she just says, no mirrors in that house. The Bible is like a mirror showing us what we really look like, what we look like inside. And sometimes that's not a pretty sight. You know, we have character blemishes and ugly sins and the Lord shines a light on them, but we have a way of switching it off. We put on the public face so that we don't need to deal with the reality of our lives as God sees us. But righteous living means putting these things right. And we can certainly be courteous in all of our dealings. And as people of faith, we need to think before we speak and keep a tight rein in our tongue and exercise care for others. True religion is keeping ourselves pure and looking after others, especially those in need. Now, we may not be able to help those still trapped in Afghanistan. We may not be able to help those who have suffered because of um, bomb explosions. We may not be able to help them other than pray for them and pray for them we should. And we can't, can't help those in, caught in refugee camps in Syria or those in Haiti. We can't help the rest of the world. We can't help many of the persecutions that are taking place right now throughout the world. But, you know, we can show love and consideration and courtesy to those who are round about us, those who are in need where we are. And we must also remember that we don't know what's going on in other people's lives, so we should always give them the benefit of the doubt. And we are called to live our lives here specifically and deliberately as Christians. And that's the way we can honour God. You know, when we do that, we are God honouring. And when we live as Christians, deliberately and faithfully as Christians, the world can see that that is because we are living out our faith. So, in conclusion, listen carefully. Speak wisely. Control your temper and in all of your actions. Be like Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we're going to worship singing, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace.
Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, you're crying out to a world in need. We know that we can do our bit, but we know that we can do it better when we are full of Christian love for other people. But Lord, we pray for a world in need. We pray especially for Afghanistan. We pray especially for the Christians trapped in Afghanistan. And, oh, Lord, in the hell that is going on there, let there be a light shining from heaven. Let there be a shining light of hope for all people. And let people who are praying to you, Lord, be helped and healed and saved and kept safe. And, Lord, we pray for the struggling world in all the areas where there's drought or famine or floods or war or terrorism or persecution. Lord, the list goes on. But we hold this crying, war-filled world before you and ask for your healing, your peace, your forgiveness. And, Lord, may our leaders speak wisely, think wisely, act wisely. And may there be wise decisions that peace may reign. And Lord, in our own relationships, let us apply your discipline and your love and your care, even if it costs us. And it will cost us, Lord. But when it does, we remember how much it cost your son Jesus to die on the cross to save us, to die on the cross to enable our sins to be forgiven to die on the cross, that we might have the Holy Spirit of the risen Lord Jesus to live inside us. And Lord, oh Lord, we pray that we can remember your love and power deep in our hearts. Help us to express them in our lives and in our service. In Jesus' name, amen. We're now going to close our worship and sing, We Seek Your Kingdom. We seek your kingdom.
of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain in your heart forever. Amen. <laughs>